Hey, what's up, y'all? Gary with 110, and today we're going to talk about the Red Cat Ascent and its lack of flex and what to do. Get rid of these, get you some of these, watch the rest of the video, and then you'll be a lot happier. All right, so let's check it out. Um, Red Cat Ascent shocks come with an external mini spring and an internal mini air spring. I've already done this on a few of the shocks, but this is what we want to take out. And basically, you, you don't even have to take the shock off the uh, axle to do it. Um, we're going to take the screw off here, take the cap off, drain the fluid out, compress it all the way, use a little T-tool, pop the nut off, take everything out, reverse, and there we go. So let's do it. Oops, we got a nut on the back here. So I have already four linked this one, so it's a little bit different. I don't have the factory shock brace in there. But aside from that, it would all be the same. So usually if you grab the shock body really hard, you can twist off the cap and have some kind of little cup ready or something. I just use an old spray paint. Yeah. And just dump away. I'll give it a minute. Usually kind of help it out. Put the back a little. But I usually don't. Uh, unless it's old shock fluid that I'm worried about getting every last drop out or something. Um, I usually don't worry about getting everything out. It's going to make a little bit of a mess. So got most of it out. Move the cup. That's when I switch over to the dirty rag. We're gonna compress the shock all the way. You see you get just enough room to get the T-tool on there. And it's the, uh, right there. Not too many spins, keep it compressed as you're doing it. Eventually that nut will come loose. Most of the T-tools, it'll stay inside. And get your rag ready. Pull it off. You're going to get some drips and drops. But inside is going to be everything you want. Shake it all out. What you should get is a spring that I'm going to Throw away a piston cap and a washer. So now got the spring out of there. All we gotta do is reverse. Well, if you wanna swap springs, which I'm gonna do here, um, take the factory spring off. And I am using the HRs, mainly just cause I wanted the uh, more color options but they're not much different than the actual low C springs. So slap one of those on there for now and we'll see. I don't know if these will be the right ones, but they're a good starting spot for me. All right, so let's get that on there. Throw the shock body back on. This can be a tight fit because that O-ring in there is a little, truth be told, probably a little oversized. And I think somebody actually posted uh, about using a Traxxas washer, or Traxxas O-ring, sorry. Mm. All right, better tweezers. That can actually grip. Slide the washer on. Slide the piston on. Piston cap on. I'll work it down over. Being gentle, you don't want to beat it up too much. Work it back around. And then the nut stayed in here for me, so now all I'm going to do is get that back on. 
And you're not gonna go crazy tight, just snug. It's just the shock. You don't wanna damage the cap on the piston there. Diaphragm, whatever it's called. So, just snug. A smooth movement. And I'm just using 30 weight to start with. I might do some additional tuning. Doing this with the shock and the spring on isn't quite as good as doing it all apart because it'd be hard to check and make sure I have just the right amount of fluid, but I'll check by rebound. So these shocks do have a diaphragm. So they're not emulsion shocks, so uh, basically this should be airtight and not um, sloshing a bunch of air around like the axial shocks. So I'll let this kind of settle for a minute, get some of the air out. I'm going to show you here the cap actually, you can see the diaphragm dips down in. So generally what you want to try and do is get the get the fluid right up to where the diaphragm is going to sit. That way the shock will give you just a little bit of rebound on its own without the spring. I'm working some of the air bubbles out there and then I'll finish topping it off. Alright, it's been sitting for a minute letting some air bubbles out there. You can see the diaphragm in the top and I think I have the fluid about to the right spot you can kind of tell if you get a whole lot of kick from the shock initially when you go to compress it or if it won't let you compress all the way the diaphragms are just too much fluid in there no, that seems pretty good I'm not hearing the sloshing noise air bubble noise so I think we're good for now. I'll go ahead and slap this back on. And be a much happier camper. Let's see how much extension we have now. Extension, flex, whatever you want to call it, the rebuilt shocks. That's how they should have come from the factory. Yup. Definite must do, I think. If you're using it as a trail rig, I wouldn't worry too much. It might be nice having that extra little extra little protection from bottoming out if you're out on the trails in there. But if you're using it as a crawler, definitely recommend pulling those internal springs. Bare minimum, then trying out the low C mini springs, either from HR, from Hot Racing, or from, uh, I think Deluxe sells some too, um, or from low C Direct. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> 